Welcome to Real Talk, an exclusive presentation produced by Duke Ellington School of the Arts. Real Talk is a film industry Q&A with directors and cast members of two independent black films. Join them as they answer questions about their roles and life in the arts. And, you know, talking about working with the school is that we need new voices. And so, you know, you can see what is possible, and it's all about just working together. So hopefully this film will inspire other filmmakers, writers, actors, directors to take flight because we need more soldiers in the game. There's nobody in the whole world like you. You've got to remember that. Ain't nobody who you. So you don't have to do nobody but you your whole life. We as consumers, we're not watching. We don't want it. We want to laugh. We don't want to see reality sometimes. So that's the chance that I'm taking. Plus, the subject matter deals with the church. There's not a lot of opportunities. It's quite as kept. The scripts ain't just falling off our desk in Hollywood. And, and I'm going to say that because I've, I've been in the game a long time. Is for someone like Russ to call you and say, read the under shepherd. When I read the under shepherd, I said, this is going to be a hit. Because the script is seats. Other questions, other questions. In the back, yes. Yeah. Takes a lot of belief 
and in yourself. So to answer your question, it was after I started getting movie after movie after movie, and I was like, I kind of like this. And uh, so I applied myself, and it's taken me a long way. Well, I started really young. I wanted to be a singer. And, uh, <laughs> got into the business I was trying to act and I realized that you know it just wasn't my thing so um, you know directing was more of uh, my passion than anything but it, it's rough out there especially uh, right now with reality TV it's just taking so many jobs and there are a lot of actors out there that are struggling but I think that's getting ready to change. It's, people are getting sick of reality TV. As soon as that goes away, people will be working again. I predict in the next two years. And I think once you start to get that moment where you realize I'm not working, I'm actually having fun. Like I'm doing, I'm earning a living doing something I love doing. Like I really enjoy this, and it's not work because. Therefore, you start to realize that it's a passion of yours, it's inside you, so because you know in the back of your head, I would do this without this paycheck, but it doesn't hurt, you know what I mean? I think one of the first things that I would tell an aspiring actor or actress is to understand that it is one of the most competitive businesses um, that one can go into. Um, I would, and, and I would also stress that it is a business, so to learn the business of it, as opposed to simply just learning the art of it, um, you'll, you'll fare much better in the business because you'll always make sure your back is covered, you'll always make sure you understand what the contracts say, um, and you'll understand how to turn your art um, into something that truly becomes lucrative, lucrative for you. Uh, one thing that I learned when I started to uh, book jobs uh, was that I would come in and before we would start the acting part, I would let my personality win them over. And you know, I, I, I understood that directors, cast directors, people like that, they want to work with other good people that are easy to work with, that are good to work with, that have good personalities and good attitudes. One thing I learned in this business, my first lesson I ever learned was your attitude is your altitude. So however your attitude is, that's how far you can go in this business. Bring out, I mean, God gave everybody 
this special thing that you, you know is a mixture of your two parents. There's nobody in the whole world like you. You got to remember that. Ain't nobody do you. So you don't have to do nobody but you your whole life. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times actors will, you know, until it's their time to go on, they'll maybe sit in their trailers, in our case, honey wagons. And um, and they'll wait till it's time for them to go on the set. And one day I was just sitting there and then Melinda came out and everybody sat there looking at Isaiah. I mean, it was just like, wow, who is that guy? I mean, we all know who Isaiah is, but it's like, wow, we're gonna stick with this. We're gonna stay, we're gonna get, he just brought a tone and no disrespect to anybody, but he brought a level that everybody stepped to it and everybody did. And, and that's, that's the best dream that any writer can get to get somebody of, of this magnitude to give this kind of performance. I think the, the, the best thing that you can have is some type of background, like a great school like this one, where you've been studying, and you've been doing scenes, and you've been working with peers and understanding what that means and what being on a set is like, and you know, really working a lot before you come into the mainstream. I think it helps um, tremendously. Uh, um, a lot of films that Hollywood likes, as far as from urban audiences, they prefer comedies from us. They don't really want dramas, because I don't think it sells. Uh, so I'm not saying it's racial, it's more green. It's just that our audience have not really supported um, movies that are dramatic. You know, I mean, you know, I have a movie that's a, a dramedy, you know, 35, I think, in my last movie. This one is like pure drama. It's fun in some spots, but it's from, and it, it's hard to sell it. And uh, if I went in there with a straight comedy, I can, you know, oh, we love this. And no disrespect, you know, Tyler, he's got to form it down, but, you know, they want to see us in, like, dresses and things like that. They don't want to see real relationships sometimes. And I'm, like I said, I'm not trying to make that a racial thing. I just think that we, we as consumers, we're not watching. We don't want it. We want to laugh. We don't want to see reality sometimes. So that's the chance that I'm taking. Plus, the subject matter deals with the church. So that's always going to crash. We inspired the film. Um, for me, um, a couple years ago, I'll try to make this real quick. A couple years ago, I was uh, watching George Bush get reelected in 2004, and I had a friend of mine who worked for the Republican Party and said that they were going around in the swing states and buying off black pastors. Some of the pastors put the money in their pockets, some put them in their churches. And that really bothered me. And then shortly right after that, I saw that a lot of pastors, not just black ones, were under indictment for tax fraud and the whole nine. So I, it inspired a story for me. Um, and, and this is not an indictment of all pastors, and I'm not taking a broad stroke of a paintbrush and saying this is all black churches, because it's not. I mean, this is representative of just a select few, because there are a lot of great pastors doing a lot of good work in the community and teaching the word. This is somebody that wants to try. I think that this movie is not supposed to be specifically targeting the black church. I think it's about people and egos and what happens when power takes play and one person has too much power and how and how his flock follows him and how that goes to his head and he becomes corrupt and all the intricacies that go along with that and I think it could happen anywhere it could happen in the church yes but it could happen in the Senate it could happen at Goldman Sachs you know what I'm saying it could happen in any in any um, career really so I don't I don't want to say this is taking aim for the black church and I don't think every black church is like this I mean the first time I saw it I was just mad I called Russ I was mad about everything I didn't understand it I thought oh this is the worst you know this is hard but it wasn't me I was so overwhelmed I forgot I was in the film I was really impacted by it as a peer audience member but I couldn't stop I think I must have texted. It drove Russ crazy. Um, because I couldn't stop talking about it. Because I was still trying to figure it out. And what I realized today is that it's the truth. 
And you know, I've been looking for an opportunity ever since grades is to get a character where we can at least tell the truth, where you don't know whether you love him or like him or not, because you're just so overwhelmed with the truth. That's all I was trying to do. So I was prepared to come to him to tell the truth in those 15 days of shooting. And uh, I, I, I'm proud to say I think I, I think I, I was successful. We all come in, and, and, and just so you all know, when we all work with Russ, it's like really like a family atmosphere. Um, and we, when you have a director, who allows you as urban and you know in Hollywood it's like African American actors and I, I consider myself an actor and I was I'm not going to say about where I was trained but when you have a, a director who allows you to do some of the things that you saw us do up here and you say hey let me try this it is just a, a beautiful thing to be able to do because you know I've done Ray and all those other movies you don't get a chance and you don't get a choice really to get but one shot at that unless you are uh, the lead in the movie, you're opening in the movie when you, you hire the director. So, you know, we all are trained to the T to do just as well as Tom Cruise and everybody else does, Robert De Niro. And, and at the end of the day, we, we, we need, especially, and I'm gonna say this personally, especially African-American females in Hollywood. You know, they deserve this. I mean, I know all these people personally, and I love all of them. But when I saw Melinda on that floor, I, I almost start crying. But somebody might say in Hollywood, oh, well, we don't think she can do that. Why? If Meryl Streep can do it, she can do it. So the way I look at it is, I, I, I'm not surprised, because I've been around these actors, but we just, you know, when I saw Russell at Bank of America, he said, I want you to do this movie. I'm like, okay, big guy, I'm do you got your money lined up, I'm there. And Russ will tell you, I didn't know Russ, I know Russ from radio, but Russ has taken a lot of criticism for his first couple of movies, like he doesn't know what he's doing. I'm like, y'all leave him alone, man, he ain't done yet. So it really starts with somebody like Russ going, because there's not a lot of opportunities as quiet as kept. Scripts ain't just falling off our desk in Hollywood. And, and I'm gonna say that because I've been in the game a long time, is for someone like Russ to call you and say, read The Under Shepherd. When I read The Under Shepherd, I said, this is gonna be a hit. Because the script is seamless. What you saw on that screen is what's on the paper. And then you have a, a, a gentleman like Russ who gives us an opportunity to shine as, 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 as actors. And, not, and, and we thank you for that, Russ. scripts, um, you know, aside from the fact that it was an amazing script, it was amazing text, it was amazing dialogue, um, as Robin said, the female characters were, were full and deep and, you know, had a range of emotions. Um, the one thing, one of the things that resonated with me was these issues that we have that we don't talk about. Um, we were out earlier having dinner and um, we were talking about the issue of bulimia and how um, I personally have a friend who is bulimic um, and has been for many, many years and has battled the disease. Um, and it is not just a physical disease, it is an emotional disease. It is a psychological disease and not just a, a white girl's disease. Um, we were speaking earlier about why um, it's something that seems to be taboo among many other things in our community. And it's like, I think, I think it's because it's something that we've never talked about, but there are plenty of issues that we don't discuss for whatever reason we sweep them under the rug. That's one of the things I love about Russ's film is that he brings these issues to the forefront front and gives us, gives us an opportunity to, you know, if nothing else, think about them, possibly start a dialogue about them, deal with them, because they are our issues too. You know, I just wanted to say my experience and um, just listening to everyone's opinions of the film and, you know, especially the young ladies stood up and really understood what this film is about. I, you know, we all really appreciate a person who looks at a project and doesn't judge it and just watches it which is why Russ didn't want to say anything in the beginning. He wants you to see it and, and make your own opinions. But you know, just 
listening to everyone, for me, wanting to be a part of this product was, um, I've been a lot of the strong woman. I've been a lot of the stand-up wife and um, the, 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 good, the do-good wife. So when Russ asked me to play the mistress, I was like, hmm, okay. This, this will be fun. This is, this is a challenge for me. This is something I don't normally do. So yeah, I would love to explore that. I would love to explore that in this great film. And for me, it was, well, not a challenge that much. But, uh, no, 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 no. But, but I really did enjoy being something else on film. It was really a lot of fun and layers for me as an actress. So. I don't know what it was for you when you read it, because you just nailed it the first day. I don't know what it was for you that, that got you there in that mode. Maybe you can share it. Was a, it was a beautiful script. It was, um, it's rare that as an African-American actress, you are offered roles that are complex, that are intricate, that show depth, and I think the full range of feelings that we as women have. And to see a man write that, was just really wonderful and surprising, refreshing. And to see that character and then to see Melinda's character and all that she's dealing with and then Elise's character, it's like all these women were so incredible. But just besides what was going on between Lamont and Isaiah's characters, it was wonderful to see female characters written so uh, full, fully. First I want to say it was an excellent movie, praise God for it. Second thing is now with all the issues that you're bringing out, have you received any backlash from our community? And then the third thing is, when is it going to be on sale so I can buy it? Well, we haven't received any backlash because the shoe doesn't fit, nobody's going to wear it. I've had uh, a lot of pastors that watch this, this film and go, man, I know somebody just like that. And they don't realize that's them. But I haven't received any backlash because I'm not indicting the black church. I could have took Isaiah and put him at UPS and told the same story. You know, I, I was just trying to make the point that this is a human issue. This is, this is not, he's not God. He got to the point where he thought he was God. You know, and, and that's the whole issue here. I, don't, I didn't want people, I don't want people to say that, hey, Oh, you be careful, don't mess with the church. I could have done a lot of things that I didn't do. I'm, I'm telling you, I, I, my first draft of this script, you know, it was pretty vicious, and I had to have a friend tell me, hey man, you need to even this out. But I didn't do a Bishop Eddie Long. I didn't, I didn't have them with gay choir directors and all these different stereotypes that we put in these films. It's not necessary. You know, we all know that's, that's played, it's been done gave him just enough on his plate. Infidelity, power, money. That's all you need because that is part of the issue in a lot of churches, not just black churches. Trust me, these, these mega white churches, same stuff goes on. So we don't own that. My dad had a nervous breakdown when I was in the 12th, 11th grade and ended up in the same mental institution as my mom. And I went to Mike Malone and all of those folks at workshop. And I said, I gotta drop out. So I want y'all to know the power that's in believing in yourselves. Because if I don't do this, Glenda and them would bust me upside the head. And they were tough. And that's what you saw on that screen. My high school students, friends have supported me, everything that I've done here. So I went to Dennis Wiley, and I said, I gotta drop out, my dad, we just got evicted, and back in the day, they used to set your stuff out on the streets. And they still do. And they took all my stuff, and my, I had one pair of pants and a shoe. And I went to Glenda Dickerson, and Mike Malone, and Kenneth Doherty, and I said, I gotta drop out. And they said, well, Hold on. They called me back the next day. And they said, we, what we're gonna do is we're gonna let you finish, we're gonna pay your tuition for the next two years. 
and we're gonna put you on payroll, we're gonna help you get new clothes, and we're gonna fill out your college applications, and the rest is history. What I want, I want to say to all the young people, to all the actors and actresses up on this panel, to all the teachers, I'm a little African-American kid out of Parkside, Mayfair area, D.C. And I want all y'all to know the power that runs this, this, this country and this town and this school right here. And, and, and Russ coming here is a, is, it symbolizes the kind of power that we have. You all got to spread the word and go see this movie, support Russ and everything he does, continue to support us in Hollywood. And I want to just thank all my friends for always being here for me. God bless you. I'm sorry, it didn't take so long. Thank you, guys. The rest of the Under Shepherd.